Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're doing a painting based on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. There's so many cool areas in Breath of the Wild, but when I think through the entire game and where all the locations are, the dueling peaks are probably my favorite. I really liked how the shrine at the top right is linked to the shrine at the other side, and discovering that, just like the peaks, how they're sort of linked, I thought that was really cool. So I decided that's what I wanted to paint from the west side looking east. Now I spent like four or five in-game days hanging out on the west side of the peaks trying to figure out exactly what time of day, what weather, and how I wanted to paint this because every different time of day is going to give you a different color scheme. So I really liked it at dawn. I like how we have a light color in the sky with these pastel colors and the mountains themselves look sort of violet. And they're in silhouette for the most part, but I will be putting some details so you can definitely see the two dueling peaks here. And I'm going to work with yellow and violet for the sky and then my far away ground. Because those colors are complementary, I think it'll give a very nice tone to this. And as I get closer to the foreground, I'll start to work in some of the greens so I have a little bit more color and detail in that foreground. My horizontal line is going to be my horizon line, and that's important because where the divide in the mountains is, I need it to be sky all the way through, so I can see the color in between both halves of the mountain. I'm going to put the sun right about here, so there'll be a glow of yellow in this area, fading into a deeper blue in this corner. So on my palette, I have a very light yellow, which will be right over the sun, moving into a other yellow, into an orange, and then into some different blues, starting with the lightest one. And I've used Golden Open for my white paint today because it stays wet a little bit longer and I should have a smoother blend of my sky colors. And I'm going to start, like I said, with that lightest yellow color and a semi-round brush and start here in the center and blend this out until I really don't have any paint left on my brush. And I'll work into the deeper yellow next and then into the orange and the light blue and the medium blue and then the dark blue working my way from the center, so I'll be working in a circle or a half circle fashion out here. first time I did the sky, I didn't like it, and it was because I didn't have a red in between the orange and the blue. I had used white instead, and it was too light for that area. So the second time, I mixed up a light red, and I put that here in between the orange and the blue, and it really helped the sky come together. I haven't done the sun yet because I need to finish the mountain range so I can see how big I want the sun to be. I've started by drawing exactly all of the circles that it could be to make an idea with this little tracer here to see if it should be this big or smaller. And once I finish the mountain range, I'll tape that in place and make decisions. If I don't like it this big, I'll cut a few of these rings off, tape it back up and see how I feel about it until I think it's the perfect size for the rest of the painting. But I need to finish that mountain range, like I said, so I've drawn it in here with the peaks included. Because this was the main focal point, I need to make sure they are set and exactly where they're going to be before I move on to anything else down here. So I've drawn in all of these mountain ranges, and normally I would paint this the darkest color and work my way towards the lighter highlights that are closer to the sun. But because I've drawn everything and drawn all of the inside lines and details, I'm going to start with the lighter colors this time. Around the sun, because you have that strong light, that glow here, I'm going to be using some of the orange colors from my sky to bring in the highlights, moving into the pinks on this part and then into blues more on this mountain peak. Then I can start to work my way darker into some of the deep purples I'm going to be having for the mountain range.
I finished the mountain range and I'm very, very happy with it. All the way to about here went very easy and very quickly. I could put paint down and it just seemed to come naturally to me and it worked really nice. I darkened some of the areas to make the recesses and added some green to make some grass on some of these faraway hills and then darkened it as it got down into this area. Then I started to work on this peak over here and in the end I really like how it turned out and it matches really nice and everything fits together. This half was just significantly harder for whatever reason. I had to work a lot longer on this half to get it looking good. But in the end I think it turned out really nice. I have some nice hills coming back on this side and I have some nice pieces here on the face that faces the other mountain. So I'm very happy with how the mountain range turned out in general. I started to work over here and I was going to just block all of this stuff in with solid color, but I started to paint this and I really liked how it was going so I just kept going with it. And sometimes you have to do that. If something is going good, you just keep working on it and you're like, I'll get to this later. But now that this is blocked in with some base colors and I have some nice um, hills going on in this area, I'm going to paint in the river so I can continue those same colors on some of the grasslands over on this side. I'm going to be putting the trees here like in my sketch and some of the other hills in this area, but because I need to fill in the river before I start this stuff, because some of this stuff is going to cover the shoreline a little bit, I need to fill in that river first. So I have some titanium white, light yellow, and light orange because the sky is going to get reflected in the water. So I have to bring those same sky colors down into that water. All of the shadows are going to stay violet, but the closer we get to our foreground, the less violet in the shadow there is going to be. I'm going to be switching to burnt umber for my shadow, but it's still going to have violet in it, so it'll be a brown-purple mix. And that'll happen as I get closer to this foreground piece. And even this will have violet in the shadow, but it will have a lot less than the mountain bag here. As I've been painting the midground, I thought about this area and how it needs to be soft to match this area, which turned out really nice. I like how that looked. I don't really like the river. It looks too much like a road right now, so I'm going to work on that in my sketchbook and see how I feel about whatever I come up with, but I can easily repaint that at any time. And then I started to work down here, and I wanted this area to start to become more in focus with harsher lines, 
very detailed areas and that's just stepping away from that soft area where I'm going to get some of this definition in this corner. A lot of trees are going to cover the bottom right corner. I'm going to bring a few in in other areas with another bigger grove on this spot. So I'm going to be filling those in with some navy colors, working my way towards green, but they're pretty dark because they're going to sit in silhouette because the sun is behind them lighting up the side you don't see. So they will be pretty dark in the painting, which is fine. And I'll just darken up a little bit underneath them to give them shadows. The platform is gonna cover a lot of the bottom left corner, which is fine because I didn't do a whole lot down there. But I'm really happy with how these hills turned out. I started over here, like I said, taking some of the same colors from this background, keeping it soft, and it looks really nice. Getting a bit more detailed and a bit harsher lines on this side because it's starting to get into the foreground, and I think it also turned out nice. For a while I was struggling with it being too different from this side, but I think the lighter colors I started to add in towards the end really helped tie it to this side and feel like a natural progression throughout the painting. The next thing I want to work on is the river. It's still not looking like water, so I want to fix that. In my sketchbook, I just drew a rough shape for the river, and I started to try different things. And on the first one, I really liked it, so I'm going to try that first on the canvas and see how it feels with the rest of the painting. On my sketch here, on this little rough draft I've done, I like how it looks and I feel like it'll fit really well in with the rest of the piece, which is why I didn't try to paint it again. I think it's going to work really well with all the colors because I'm using all of these same colors that are in the painting. I'm just making it a bit more blue on the edges so it blends in nicely and looks more like water. Whenever I'm doing a painting, my plans will change. Sometimes I sketch it one way and paint it totally different. Sometimes it's the same, but that's pretty rare. In this painting in particular, I've been working through this and I've decided different things as I've gone along. I decided to get rid of clouds I originally had planned for here because you don't really see them anywhere else because they're too low on the horizon. So I decided not to have any clouds at all. For the rest of the painting, I've gotten it to this point and there's some things that I'm still debating that I've made a decision on based on how everything else looks. Originally, I had planned for a very extreme foreground here that would be like this platform on the bottom left corner. But now that I have this painting, I feel like it will detract from the scene. It will have a lot of detail because it's so close and I don't wanna have a whole lot of detail here when you should be looking at the rest of the painting. I think that's going to be distracting and hiding some of the painting down here. So I've decided not to paint that at all, but you can still see it in my original sketch. And even looking at my sketch now, I feel like it hides some of the piece and you don't get to see this beautiful wide open landscape that Breath of the Wild is known for. So that's why I've decided not to do that. I also think it ruins the leading lines throughout the painting. 
In this painting, I feel like there's two strong lines where your eye follows to look at all the detail. I feel like your eye kind of follows the river and looks up at the dueling peaks here, and it kind of jumps over to the sun and then follows the light path this way which I think is really cool. I like that element of this piece, and I feel like having this platform here would detract from that with all its detail and all of its extreme foregroundness. The other thing I've been debating is having the tower at all. Now I've also sketched that in here where it should go, and I really like having the tower there, but I feel like painting it in true color to the game with the yellow and the glowing orange or blue would detract because there's no other blue that would match that except down here and it just doesn't feel right to also throw it there. I want everyone looking at everything else, not focused on this tiny little tower. And the same goes for orange. There's not really a bright, bright orange that would match this in the rest of the painting, so your eye is going to focus on that one piece. So I've decided to paint it in with some of my darker purples and using maybe a little bit of the lighter purple so it looks 3D instead of flat with just the one violet. And we're done! We have the dueling peaks from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.